Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you, and by you, I mean Axsymmetry dual engine users who might have just purchased a new Mars Camtrak system and are just getting started with it and wanna set it up and you guys having issues with the calibration process. So I'm gonna be showing you guys how I calibrate my camera and lens system with the Mars Camtrak. So, if you guys purchase the Mars system, you will get a calibration board. That is not the calibration I have in my hands. That calibration board is used to calibrate the Mars with Unreal Engine directly using the LiveLink protocol, which I will not be talking about in this video. So this calibration board, you know, can be downloaded, the design, right, can be downloaded from the Axiometry website. I will put a link in the description. And you're supposed to print it out and use it for the calibration process. Now, um, you should print it out like maybe like I did here as a sticker and stick it to something that is hard, such as this, you know, piece of acrylic board that I have. Do not stick it on something that's flimsy and can distort when you put it and move it around because you need the board to be absolutely stale. Otherwise, it will be a nightmare. It will be very, very hard for you to get uh, through the calibration process. So do yourself a favor, print it on something that's hard. You will notice that I have a big checkered board and I have a small checkered board. So why do they give us two designs? Well, I've never used the small one. I've always used the big one because the small one is actually designed for smaller spaces. So the big one, like actually my room is not that small. So we're gonna be, it's big enough to use the big board, right? So basically, how do you define big or small? If you use the big board and you can move around it, right, from different angles, then you're good to go. If you have a smaller space and you can't really move around that much, you might want to use the smaller board, right? So that is the difference, but I've never had to use the small board before. All right, before we start the calibration process, a few more tips. First of all, this is at least a two-man job. You could do this by yourself, but it's gonna be a really long day for you. So at least two people, one needs to be you know, on Aximetry, on the calibration tool, on the PC, and one person needs to be on the floor to move the camera around because you're gonna be capturing different angles of the board, so you're gonna need to move the camera around. So if you have three people, another person can help you with the cables and all that, one it can focus on you know, actually framing the camera. Next tip, you need a monitor on the floor. You know, this is gonna feed a mirror image of what's happening in Aximetry on the computer so that the people that are, you know, in charge of moving the camera around can see where they're supposed to be moving to because it's gonna show, okay, move to the right side of the board, move to the left side of the board, which you're gonna see later during the calibration process. But this way, the person in front of the computer doesn't have to yell at the person on the floor, like, okay, go left, go right, and all that. They can just see on the screen where they're supposed to be and that will make things go much faster. All right, moving on, make sure the area around your board is clear because you're gonna be moving all around the board. So make sure you don't have any like hard cases and stuff like that lying around. And also, once you start the calibration process, do not at all under any circumstances move the board from its original position. Once it starts, do not even touch it because it will screw up your calibration and you will need to start over and that's not a fun thing to do. And also, you gotta make sure there are any like light spots like on the board like too much high reflections and all that so set your camera your iso and move the lights around so that everything is sort of flat all right next you're gonna have to move this camera all around the board so make sure you mount it on a tripod if you have a tripod that has wheels then that's fantastic it'll make things go faster i unfortunately don't have a tripod with wheels so i will have to do with just a normal tripod do not use like a porta jib like I have over there, you know, like I know when you just got your tracking system, you're like, you really want to put it on a jib and you know, it's like, see the movement and all that. You might be tempted to do that, but don't. We tried that when we first got the system and it was hell to move that thing around. So put it on a tripod first. Once you're done with the calibration process, then you move it to your jib to actually do your production. All right, last tip. You only have to do this calibration process for each setup one time, right? So for example, here I have a Lumix BGH1 box camera with this Olympus lens. And let's say 
um, in future productions, I'm going to be using this setup all the time, right? So I only have to calibrate it one time and then I can just use the same calibration profile in all future productions. I can even just copy it, put it in a hard drive if I have to move to another system and another location and I can load it up in the Aximetry Calibrator and you know, everything will work as it should. But one thing to note, when we do the calibration process, there's actually gonna be two steps, right? First step, it's gonna calibrate the lens with the camera. So basically, Aximetry is gonna try and figure out, okay, it's using this size sensor and it's using this uh, lens. So this is the lens distortion, you know, uh, it's basically just an Aximetry. Okay, I'm using this camera and lens. And then the second part is actually gonna calibrate the tracker. And what it's doing, it's actually, it's trying to find out where the tracker is located on the camera. So for example, like the sensor is here, right? But the tracker is actually up here. So, you know, if you know, you're doing virtual production and it actually thinks the sensor is here, you're gonna have, how do you say, like, uh, you're gonna have a miss there. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not where it's supposed to be. So by, you know, by doing the calibration, Aximetry is gonna know where the tracker is placed in parallel to the sensor. So it knows where to place the, you know, delta of the sensor. So it's gonna like move it down. So that means if you want to use the same calibration profile in your future productions, you need to make sure that your tracker is placed exactly in the same spot as you have it on the day that you calibrate. So, you know, take a picture, for me, with this camera, it's easy because, you know, it's put on the hot shoe, but you never know in the future, anything can happen, right? Somebody might set it up wrong and they load up the calibration profile and then it doesn't really work out. That's because something has changed. So once you calibrate it, if you want to use it again, make sure you have the exact same setup. All right, so now before we start the calibration process, I assume you guys have already set up the Mars, set your center point, make sure your base station are active and all that. If you haven't, I've made another video dedicated to setting up the Mars. So I'm really only gonna focus on the calibration process in this video. So if you have everything set up and everything is already set up on the floor, let's get to the Eximetry Calibrator. So if I search and I type in calibrate, you know, there here it goes. It shows there is a Eximetry basic calibrator and there is a camera calibrator. You don't need the basic one, just use the camera calibrator. And if you have the broadcast version, you should have this app. All right, I've opened up the camera calibrator and I'm gonna manage my devices and I'm gonna go down to tracking, camera tracking and 3D. This is the protocol we're using and I already have my camera here. So if you don't know how to set it up, uh, again, I have another video talking about this. So I assume you already have your camera tracking registered to asymmetry. So apply, okay. And I'm just going to start. All right, so as you can see, I already have a profile here with the same camera I'm using today, the Lumix VGH1, but this is actually a different lens from the one I'm using today. So I'm gonna add to create a new profile. I'm gonna name it the camera name. So I know this is for that specific camera, VGH1, and I'm going to be using a four, uh, actually no, a seven millimeter to 14 millimeter, but I'm only gonna calibrate it on this, on the 14 millimeter. So, so that I know, okay, I'm calibrating this uh, profile to this, how do you say, like focal length, right? So I'm gonna put the brand of my uh, lens, so just for future references, and make sure it's in 6 dot and not PTZ because I'm not using a PTZ camera. Click okay. And the first thing I'm gonna do is set the sensor width because this helps uh, a lot to get a cleaner uh, track, you know, so you don't have that much like distortions. So uh, since I already know what my sensor size is from my previous track, which is this one, 21.64, I'm gonna go custom and 21.64. If you don't know your sensor size, you can Google it based on your camera. And now for the tracking device, I'm gonna use this one, right? The one that we set up. Okay, and video input, I'm gonna set it up to my camera input, which I'm using here is the SDI Decklink 4K. Here it is. And now I can actually see my camera feed since I have actually turned on my camera and set it to the correct FPS. 
All right, so as I mentioned before, there are two steps to calibrating. We need to calibrate the lens first and then the tracker. So I'm gonna start with the lens calibration. And I am using a zoom lens, but I'm only gonna use it on its, uh, how do I say, tightest focal length. So I'm gonna select it on fixed. All right, so I'm gonna set the field of view uh, and then you know I gotta make sure the board is visible. I'm just gonna go click next. And actually this is very self-explanatory because you know Aximetry has made this really easy for us. It's really step-by-step -step and the graphics really tell you what to do. So as you can see, I have a little map on the right and this is where the camera is located and this is where the board is located. So, um, it's giving you a link here where to download the calibration board, but you know, we've already done that. So we're just gonna go next. And here uh, it's telling you that, you know, use a control monitor on the floor, which I've already mentioned before, and we've already done that. So uh, we're gonna go next. And now it's telling us that we should frame our board like the example on the left. So on the right side, this is actually your camera feed. And on the left side is uh, where we're supposed to, how we're supposed to frame it. And since my screen right here is being duplicated to the floor. My team on the floor now will know where to position the camera. Go ahead, guys. Okay, and all right, now we've framed it correctly. So I'm gonna hit next. And uh, it's telling us to use a uh, high F number. So to close the aperture so that, you know, there's not too much, uh, you know, like blur, like the depth of field. So uh, I think we've set, we set usually set our camera to about four. Uh, usually we use 4.0 uh, for the minimum. All right, so um, uh, we are in position. Our f-stop, uh, sorry, our aperture is, is good. Now we can click next. And now it's going to tell us to focus on the board. And as you can see here on the right bottom side, you can see where our camera is located the blue icon is our camera and the gray area underneath it is where we need to position the camera and now it's telling us to set the focus on the board please set the focus on the board and it is actually already focused because you have a sharpness meter on the left side so if the board is out of focus it will drop down to the yellow or to the red and you do not want that you want to keep it in the green all right, now I framed my board correctly and uh, you can see on the right side, there's a little map and the blue is our camera and it needs to be positioned within the gray area. And we've done that for the first step and it's telling us to set our focus on the board. And we have done that because we can see on the sharpness meter, it is green. If it is out of focus, it will drop down to yellow and into the red and you do not ever want to get into the red. So this is done, we're set up and I'm just gonna hit next. Right, so we're moving on to the next step. And now it's telling us to get closer to the board. And since this is fed, uh, this feed, my screen is fed to the floor, my team knows exactly where to go next. And if you place it properly, it's gonna, there's this, you know, like green notification that's gonna ask you to hit the next button. So before you click next, make sure your team is not moving the camera anymore and you hit next. And now it's telling us to move back. So we'll move the camera back. All right. You are still too close. Move back a bit, guys. See, as you can see, you really it's really hard to do this by yourself. You're in position, hit next. Okay, I'm gonna move to the right side now of the board. Make sure you do not accidentally hit the board. Otherwise you will have to start over again. All right, I'm gonna hit next. All right guys, uh, I'm not gonna move the camera first for a bit. I just wanna uh, tell you guys something. Is that when you see on the right side, there is this like this marker and it could be on the top or on the bottom or on the left side. If this shows up, that means you have to get the uh, black boxes, your black squares, close to that white marker. So the arrow is going to tell you to go right, but actually means that you need to tilt your 
camera or pan your camera to the opposite direction. So the arrow is telling you to go right. It's telling the board to get closer to that edge of the screen. So uh, guys, pan the camera to the left a little bit. Slowly, more and more. Okay, tilt down. Okay, go left some more. All right, there you go. If you have too much of the of the board that's out of screen, it's gonna tell you to move the camera so that the camera can see it. So this is good, I'm gonna hit next. And uh, from this point forward, uh, it's gonna be repetitive, so I'm just gonna like fast forward this video. Hold it. All right, and we are done with the lens calibration part, and now we're gonna move on to the next step, which is the tracking calibration. Okay, so as you can see for this part, we've actually put the uh, calibration board on the floor, so it's not on the chair anymore. And uh, so we have the correct FOV. It should be moved closer a little bit, actually, but it's okay. Uh, same F number and all that, and uh, next. Okay, so it's time to set focus on the board and it is focused as the sharpness meter is in green. And as you can see, my camera, the blue one, is positioned correctly within the gray area. So this is similar to the lens calibration. We just have to follow the instruction, move around the board, and again, do not uh, move the board. And if possible, uh, make sure you do not, a, uh, you're not covering the base station so you do not lose uh, your tracking data. And also another tip is make sure no one steps on the Ethernet cables that uh, are connected to the rovers because those could temporarily uh, disable the feed of the tracking data to your uh, from the Mars uh, to the rovers or from the rovers to the Mars and to your computer. So make sure nobody steps on your Ethernet cables. All right, so again, I'm going to fast forward this step because it's just very repetitive. Next. All right, and we're done with calibrating the tracker and now we can click test calibration. And uh, what I want to do now is actually, you guys, can we move the camera to the center of the, of the green? Right, and look at the board. And as you can see, we have these two uh, markers, right? And I would like to just move the markers. Usually I put it on like one of the squares on the board. Like so. Right, the other one as well. There you go. All right, and this is actually a pretty decent starting point. It's quite sticky already. And of course I could fine tune this again. I could fine tune this again, but I'm not going to do that because you know I'm gonna do that within uh, asymmetry. We're still here in the calibrator and uh, this is gonna reset anyway when I get to uh, asymmetry. So I'm gonna fine tune it within asymmetry. So actually we are actually done with the calibration process. And that's it that's done for the calibration process and you know you can bring your profile anywhere and as long as you have the same setup as i mentioned earlier you're good to go and that's what i love about the mars is that you could like okay today i'm in this studio and maybe i want to use this in another studio like i could just bring the same system and you know start it up and send uh set the center point of the studio and load the calibration profile and i'm good to go that's it like you could really set up like really, really fast without any drama. Anyway, thank you for watching. Um, I hope this video helps. If you're interested with the process of the whole setup of the Mars with the Axiometry DE, you guys can check out my other video on this. See you guys on the next one. Bye.